is not being or bringing anything into existence really the best way to reduce suffering? Is it better to never have been? While this can come across as an extreme viewpoint, some people believe that it would be better if we stopped the procreation of sentient beings. Anti-natalism is a philosophy that opposes human procreation, holds it as an immoral act and defines it as a cause of suffering. It is the view that says it is wrong to bring a child into existence. While there are many reasons people do not have children, in this video we will explore the philosophy and arguments of anti-natalism. Please note that it is just an exploration and elaboration presented in an informative way for educational purposes and is not an endorsement and criticism of any kind. Philosophy of Antinatalism You might have come across various authors and philosophers that hint towards antinatalism. While the idea has existed for a long time, it started gaining attention in the last two decades or so. Authors like Emil Chauvin, Schopenhauer, Karima Karema, Theophile de Giraud and David Benatar are successful in precisely articulating their concept through their literature. The recent prominent author and South African philosopher David Benatar explains his views in his books that to not exist is the only true way to prevent suffering. He also states that his views are from a place of compassion and not hatred. The famous Romanian philosopher and author Emil Chauvin who is considered the biggest nihilist author after Nietzsche and Schopenhauer, also had his works dedicated to the school of thought. In Trouble with Being Born, he has written, to have committed every crime but that of being a father. Schopenhauer says, Would not a man rather have so much sympathy with the coming generation as to spare it burden of existence? Theophile de Giraud says, it goes without saying that the solution to suffering is delivered truly in the saintly simplicity of not procreating. After in-depth reading of their literature, we can easily trace out their core beliefs and suggestions. That is, all life is suffering, so it's noble to not give birth in order to prevent suffering. It suggests that non-existence is better than existence because there's an asymmetry between the good and bad in the world as bad always outweighs the good. The idea of antinatalism revolves around suffering and morality. The reason it resonates with people is because it speaks about one of the intense feelings we experience, pain. Even though some people find this view very comforting and true, it won't be wrong to acknowledge that this philosophy sets a tone of pessimism for life negates life in terms and metrics of suffering and joy. The feeling that it would have been better if I was never here, or anyone for instance, seems appropriately controversial. To start to think this way is to assert that life is all suffering. So even though such thoughts lift up the burden of your life's responsibilities and puts all the blame on existence, I believe it's ingenuine to not think about consequences of such thinking. The problem is not with pessimism, it seems an appropriate reaction to human suffering, but to stay there forever is to add more to your suffering. The root of this feeling seems to be in the fact that we as a modern society have forgotten about the value of higher aims and responsibilities in life and negated ourselves to only suffering and happiness. These two are parts of life, but to define life in terms of happiness and suffering seems naive. Because if we start to believe that, then the only value you can get from life is happiness or suffering. It sounds normal up to a certain age, but as we grow we start to realize that it isn't enough. The nature of life is temporary and fleeting. Attaching oneself with expectations of happiness leads to suffering. Procreation Even though procreation has been looked at as a mere physical activity that has some sense of social value. The importance of biological and evolutionary aspects should not be discarded completely. Procreation ensures continuity of the species, hence life on earth. And instead of finding solutions for the present suffering in life, to go to an extent to stop life itself seems extreme. The philosophical aspect of procreation in antinatalism sets an approach that absence of existence or non-being is better than being. 
It also presumes that giving birth is certainly addition to the suffering. The genuine problem here is we cannot assign predicament on something that doesn't exist. And even if we assume that, it ignores that you can't help others reduce their suffering without being born. Existence is an act that can transform into cruelty or kindness. So nothing is more selfish than not being here to help others. You have to exist if you truly want to reduce the suffering that is present here. And to say that human life can only bring chaos, disappointment and suffering is giving up on human spirit, intellect and human abilities. I think the core problem is when we start to assign meaning in terms of joy and suffering. Life can't be categorized purely on happiness and pain. It's filled with opportunities to choose a path or aim by making genuine resourceful decisions to lead a meaningful journey. To reduce it down to something equivalent as burden seems intentionally disappointing. Whether or not to have children is a purely personal choice and shouldn't be judged by anyone through their lenses of morality. I do believe that if you're going to have children, know the responsibilities, but don't be afraid of it if it exceeds your expectations. Be willing to fulfill the needs of your children and realize that they can be medium to teach you something and add value to your life that you wouldn't experience otherwise. Even though the social construct presents problems to those who don't want children, I don't think there is a need to justify their personal choice. I truly believe in human spirit of leading a meaningful life while overcoming it all. I'd like to end this video with a quote of the author we discussed earlier, Emil Sharon. Man starts over again every day in spite of all he knows against all he knows. The realization of suffering should not lead to hatred, disappointment and bitterness, but to compassion, kindness and courage. Thank you for watching this far.